Today we're talking with Alex Brackey, who runs the Valor Group here at Real Broker. Alex is a former law enforcement officer and really focuses on that niche of law enforcement officers in his real estate business. And in this call, he really breaks down how he focuses on a specific niche like that in his business and how he gets sphere of influence referrals and repeat business from his clients. Really great call. Let's go ahead and hop in. All right. So Alex, can you tell me a little bit about what your business looks like today and how, how did you get started in real estate in the first place? Yeah. So uh, I've, uh, this is my 11th year in the business. Um, prior to real estate, I was a cop. Uh, I was in law enforcement almost 10 years. Uh, and so uh, came from that world, really didn't know anything about business, didn't have family in business. Uh, so I really kind of you know, was figuring it out as I went. Um, mm -hmm. I'll say, you know, the one thing that I, I, I did right early on is I, as I hired a coach, I you know, had a coach and have had a coach almost the entire time I've been in business. Um, so, you know, 11 years in now, uh, I, I have a team, I've owned a team for, for many years now. Uh, the, the brand that we, we roll with right now is, uh, the Valor Group, uh, where most of us were prior military, law enforcement, firefighters and allies. Um, we're right outside Washington, D.C. So obviously, you know, we, we've got a lot of uh, like minds that, that we, we help, uh, you know, buy and sell homes uh, with. Um, and so we've got uh, we've got six agents on the team, plus myself. Uh, we've got a full time admin uh, as well as a like video uh, editor, social media guy um, on the back end as well. OK, wow. And, and do you think that. Um being a former career in law enforcement, has that influenced your, your business? Um, and is that oh like, my gosh, yeah, yeah tremendously. Uh, and it's, it's funny, like looking back, right. I mean, hindsight is it's, it's always 2020, right. So looking back to me, it's so obvious that, you know, I have, I have the entrepreneur's mind. Um, I always have been super interested in just kind of that science of communication of conversion of, sales, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, in my prior life, when I was a cop, it looked, it was, it was different, but it was the same. You know, it was, you know, if I stopped somebody and, you know, they were slurring words and they were drunk as a skunk, right? I mean, there were, there were certain word tracks that I would use and I, I had a certain delivery method that would achieve the intended result, right? I, I would be able to get them to leave the car um, without having to, you know, go hands-on or have a fight or, you know, have a lot of drama with it. Um, and ultimately, hopefully make the roads a little bit safer. Um, and it turns out, right, sales is, is not radically different. Um, there are ways that you can present and ways that you can use your, your spoken language, right, to affect the intended result. And, and for me, it's not about, you know, it's not about like manipulating, but it, it's, it's more about like, how do we help folks? Like, how do we, if they have a stated goal, right? Sometimes human beings, just because we're human beings, we can get in our own way. Uh, and so how do we, how do we help folks through what is otherwise a super stressful period in life to ultimately wind up on the other side better off? Right. Uh, and so it's, it's a lot the same as law enforcement was. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, I have kind of a similar path You know, I did 11 years in the air force and I got out of that and got right, right into real estate. And like, I had no sales experience, no business experience whatsoever. <laughs> just kind of jumped right in. Um, and somehow I survived those first couple of years. Um, well, let's talk about your team a little bit. What, yeah. what, what kind of numbers are you guys usually putting up in terms of like volume um, and production? So usually we're, we're in like that 40 to 60 million range uh, each year, depending on the year, depending on how many agents we've got that year. Um, I like to personally kind of throttle myself right around, you know, I don't like to do more than 50 deals in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, just for me, I found that if I'm doing more than 50, that's when I, I start to lose any semblance of work-life balance. Yeah. Uh, and it's important to me. And I've got, I've got a wife, I've got three young kids at home. Like I, I want to, I want to be present um, yeah. because I, I am a believer that look, all the money in the world means nothing. Uh, if you know, you, you don't have, uh, you know, the other side of, of life. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, I have enough business and I, I'm in, I feel very fortunate that you know, I can kind of pick and choose who I work with, not so much who, but where, you know, whereas at the beginning of my career, I would have driven, you know, two and a half hours if I had to, to, to work with a buyer client and show houses two hours away. Um, and, and I don't, I'm fortunate that I don't have to do that anymore. 
Um, I can kind of stay closer to home and in the areas I really, really know and, and really like to serve. Yeah, I love that, man. 50 deals a year is a lot. Um, I think the most I've done is 30 deals a year and I got burnt out doing that. So even doing 50 is, is quite a bit. Where um, what's like your primary source of leads for your for your business or your team? So yeah, eleven years in now. Again, I'm I'm fortunate that again, personal business. A lot of it is from past clients. It's referral. It's it's you know repeat business. Um, being you know the the former career that I had with uh, law enforcement, we created uh, a specific program for cops called Homes for Cops. You know, one of the big problems that cops have is you know when they buy a home, their name and home address are tied together searchable on the internet by somebody that would like to find out where their spouse and kids sleep while they're at work. So, you know, like having a solution to that problem makes for very easy word of mouth type referrals. Um, mm -hmm. And so I get a lot of referrals from that community, from the law enforcement, the firefighter community, even attorneys, prosecutors, right, that have that same shared problem. Uh, and so it, it worked out really well because Look, I mean, we we all like working with folks that are similar mindset, similar you know belief system, and and you know similar background, yeah. and so you know kind of having that solution specifically tailored to that community has led to a lot of business that that comes from there, and it just makes me enjoy the business that much more. Um, so it is a, a lot of it is uh, from from past clients at this point, um, but. One of my starts when when I first came in the business, uh, I joined a team because I didn't know what I was doing, right? And and so I needed somebody to to kind of help guide me, and that team was very internet lead based. And so a lot of what I learned was then how to work internet leads, how to work phone sales, uh, and so that's still I would say to to this day probably my strong suit is how to how to succeed and excel over the phone with maybe folks that have never met you, don't know you. And, and you've got to build that rapport and trust really quickly. Yeah, I love that. It's a great experience to have. Like, that's a great way to start your career off is in phone sales and internet leads just to get that experience. Like that'll kind of carry over um, moving on. Um, that's great, man. I love the idea of like homes for comps and really kind of tailoring the specific plan for the specific uh, niche. You know, it makes me think like, oh man, can I do something like that for the military niche or can somebody do something like that specifically for like the 55 plus niche or firefighters or something like that? Um, and so you said that you get a lot of business from your, your database, your SOI, your, your past clients, what kind of activities are you doing to sort of stay in front of them and kind of nurture that, that database? Yeah. So we, uh, I, I have long done client events. So we, you know, for a long time I was trying to do them every quarter and, you know, I'll be honest, uh, that was tough to maintain. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I really have been much better at, at getting two to three a year. Uh, so one of them, our favorite, uh, one of our favorites is is usually a Washington Nationals baseball game. So um, I used to do like, you know, take everybody to the movie theater and, and found out that it's actually cheaper to take them to a Washington Nationals baseball game, which it works because, you know, we have clients kind of all over the Northern Virginia, D.C., you know, even up in the Maryland, West Virginia area. Um, very few of them would be willing to drive any distance to go watch a movie in a movie theater. But right. a lot of them are willing to drive to go to a baseball game. And so you know, it's, you know, cost per head, it's super uh, reasonable, uh, it's pretty affordable. Again, it's a venue that I don't have to clean up afterwards, right? They've got food and drinks there, like it, it, it works really well. And so we do that usually once a year, um, let folks bring, you know, their family, their you know, kids, everybody, um, just anybody who wants a ticket can have it. And so we fill up an entire section full of, of Valor Group uh, folks, which is, is pretty cool. I love that. Uh, so I like we do you probably engage with them a lot better in that environment as well. You go watch a movie, cool. like they're zoned out for two hours. You see them a little bit before, a little bit after. But something like that, you could actually like sit down and like walk around and talk to, uh, talk totally. to the people. And totally. Kind of yeah. We go, we go grab a drink together and you know, we go get a hot dog or, you know, I just kind of make my way through the stands and, you know, how you guys been and, you know, kind of have that touching base conversation. Yeah. Um, so outside of that, you know, we do, uh, we do a Thanksgiving pie giveaway and, you know, we usually try to throw one more in there each year. Um, we do have a, a weekly uh, email newsletter that goes out to our folks. Um, we tie that into Again, some of our some of our social media uh, mm -hmm. videos that we do, so it's it's kind of repurposing the same content. Um, so it's it's less work, but just utilizing it in a little bit different way. And then we we also do things like you know just like 
everybody in our database would get. They'll get the same you know deal of the week emails and things like that. So it's a lot of of just consistent touches um, that, that they're getting through the year. In addition, you know, the monthly market updates, you know, for their home and, and things like that. So lots of automation, um, you know, but a lot of it is going to be tailored specific to, to them. Wow. Okay. Well, let's dive into that, the email marketing side of things. So, so they, they, every month they get an automatic monthly home evaluation, you said, right. and then every week you do a deal of the week email. Um, I, I've heard Sharon talk about that. Do you kind of follow his model for that? hundred percent. Yeah. We, we follow his model. And, and again, a lot of it is certainly there's, there's benefit there in, you know, getting the hand raisers, right? Sharon talks about that, you know, finding the folks in your database that you've never talked to that suddenly, yep, they're interested and they're going to raise their hands uh, and reply back. But the other piece of it is just, it's that, it's that constant touch that, you know, you are the industry expert. You are the one who's, you know, in the thick of it in terms of real estate. Um, and so, we have a very, very low unsubscribe rate from those emails, which was kind of, in my mind, that was that was the drunk monkey I had prior to starting it was like, gosh, you know, they just bought a house for me and, and they're not going to want to hear about another good deal. Right. And, and it turns out, you know, much like some of my mentors said that, you know, they're going to filter it out. Right. If it's not for them, they're going to delete it and it's not a big deal. But very rarely are they actually going to like unsubscribe from it uh, because they have that relationship with you. Uh, and so it has been good. And I've gotten comments from folks like, you know, hey, this is this is like super smart, you know, because they open they're just there's a natural intrigue right behind like real estate and deals. Uh, yeah, and yeah. So they, they open and just find out like, hey, what what is the deal? They're not going to buy, but they just it's that, that I, intrigue. I love that. For those who are not kind of familiar with Sharon's model, can you ex kind of explain like what do you put in these yeah. uh, in these emails? So it's it's pretty simple. Like it's there's not a lot of flair to it. It's just, it's kind of a text-based email and, and the subject line is, you know, Leesburg uh, deal of the week or, you know, whatever location deal of the week. Uh, and then you go through and you say, hey, look, this this week's deal of the week is a, you know, single family home in Leesburg. Um, details below and it's just, it's bullet points. It's like six bullet points and it's, you know, uh, a little bit of info about the house, about the neighborhood, and then just two two things about what we like about it. What, what, makes us believe that this is a good deal. Uh, and then you include the price and you say, hey, if you want more info, you want to see photos or whatever, just reply back. Uh, and so it's that act of, of creating the the uh, conversation. It's the the engagement. The That's what is kind of the magic of it, is that it's not just a link and you're you're sending it out and saying, hey, engage with me, right, if, uh, if you're interested. And so it's super simple, super easy to execute on, and uh, it works like a charm. I love that, man. Yeah, I've, I've seen him talk about it. I've never actually tried it. Um, how, how big is your email list? And do you know what your, do you have an idea what your click-through rate is on those deal of the week emails? Um, so yeah, click-through, there's no click-through rate because again, there's nothing to click. Uh, it's just a re re response okay, I guess, rate. I mean, like, I guess open rate. Open rate. Are open rates are usually pretty high. Uh, so our, our database right now sits uh, somewhere between 16 and 17,000. Uh, Cause again, that goes out to everybody in the database. Jeez. Um, so, you know, of those, though, I mean, our our open rates are north of 40 percent on the deal of the week. Wow. Uh, it's a really high open rate on deal of the week. Now, there's um, we don't get that high of an open rate on some of the other stuff that we send out. But deal of the week is usually pretty good. And of those, I mean, we're almost every week we're getting at least two or three folks that are raising their hands that, again, we've had no conversation with, right? They've been in the database for eight years uh, and something about this one, right? It, it just piqued their interest and now now we're in conversation. Wow, that's huge, man. I love that. Um, and how, how'd you build an email list that big? Were you doing a lot of like paid advertisements originally to start building yes. them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, that, again, that was what I knew. Um, so a, a lot of it is, you know, I, I grew my business through online leads, uh, through, you know, some of the Zillow realtor homes, you know, many years ago. Um, but then also I, I was a cold caller. I would, I would call expireds. I would circle dial. I would, you know, all of that stuff. And so just after, you know, again, I'm 11 years in from having, you know, doing that consistently, um, I, I built a, a, you know, okay size database. Um, and, and a lot of those are, I mean, now we, we have refined, uh, some of that online lead gen and you know for like all of our listings we were proactively marketing those you know outside the mls you know doing the our, our own marketing um you know that, that we're in control of and we can see and you know, we can 
point folks where we want them to go. Um, so we still are, are doing a lot of that. And, and that's like just by the numbers where a lot of the leads come from is, is our own marketing efforts. Um, but yeah, continuing to just grow that database and, and you know, hopefully bring in more folks that, that we can serve. Yeah, I love that. And the so you said you send that out once a week, and then you also send out another weekly email. Um, tell me more about that weekly email. So you said you have your social media post in there. Do you put anything else like market stats or anything? So we we uh, you know we haven't done the market stats. We we do a market stats uh, update on social media once a month, usually the you know toward the beginning of the month. Um, but uh, yeah, typically that email is is just like I, I usually try to do one topic per week that is more like consumer focused, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's the, the five mistakes people make when buying a house or, you know, something like that. Uh, and so that makes it really good for social media content, but then we can also take that and create just an easy, easy to consume video for consumers, but it also translates then really easily into a blog. Uh, and so we can send that out in an email, uh, that directs them to the blog with the video embedded right there. Um, and it's, it's just super easy content, you know, that we're using both on social media, on reels, on a blog, on, you know, full length video. Um, it's, it's very easy to multipurpose that. I love that. Yeah. That's what I love about video. Like, you know, it, people often talk about, well, you know, I want to get my videos to rank and I want them to generate me leads. And like, that's great. And like, I absolutely do that. But keep in mind that like, it's also great for one is like lead conversion. If you have a bunch of videos that you can send to people and build that relationship with them deeper, help you out with that. And then also repurposing them for your SOI like this and sending them new videos every week to your email list or posting it on social media for your sphere to see. Like that is content to stay in front of your SOI. And well, and it's funny, Malcolm, because like I, when, when I give talks to, you know, other agents, brokerages, et cetera, like one of the things that I ask, you know, I, I don't, I don't give them any frame of reference, but I just say, Hey, look, if you had a room full of people that were laser focused on what you're saying, how many people would you need to have in that room for you to feel like it was worth your while? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you usually get answers like, you know, oh, one person would be good or, you know, gosh, 10 people would be awesome. And I'm like, so then why are we so upset, right? When a video that we create only gets 45 views, right? You just had 45 people laser focused on what you were talking about. And, you know, you just told me that one would have been good. And yet you're upset when you have 45, right? I feel like it's just, it's kind of a, a mindset shift. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And like, you don't need a lot of views for it to be profitable and worth your time and generate you business. You know, that, that, that's that's the truth. Especially like if you had a video about, cops relocating to the DMV area and like special programs, a hundred views on that is probably going to generate you multiple leads. Like, you know, yeah, need... another, yeah, uh, another example of this. Um, so I just, I hosted a webinar, uh, last week. Um, it was what we're eight days out from it. Um, so eight days out from that webinar, I have landed three more clients from that. Uh, we had a total of uh, about four dozen registrations. So I'm pushing now 10% of the registrations have now come, and we're only eight days out, right? Into wow. turned into clients that I didn't have before. Um, so it's, again, you don't need thousands and thousands of people attending your webinar or watching your videos to really get the in, intended impact. Tell me about that. Tell me about the webinars that you're doing. These are like buyer, how to buy a home webinar. So yeah, I've, I've turned my focus more to listings. So yeah, like I'll host, um, you know, home seller webinars, selling simplified webinars. Um, I started those last fall and um, testing how to get people to register. We've tested direct mail, um, obviously social media, paid ads online. Um, so we're still testing that to find out what, what gets us the most bang for our buck. Um, but you know, the last one was, um, you know, because the news broke just whatever, three weeks ago about the NAR settlement. So the, the webinar we were pushing out then is, hey, how is this going to change the way that folks buy and sell homes? Mm -hmm. And so again, talking about it more from the consumer standpoint and what are the things that they need to be cognizant of as they move forward in, in the real estate space? Uh, and so we, we ended, yeah, like I said, we had about four dozen people register for that. I love that. Yeah. And that's awesome. And that's just like a live stream that you're doing essentially, right? It was. Yeah. So it's, um, I, I do the, the zoom webinars. Uh, mm -hmm. and so it's cool cause you obviously it's live. 
but then it's evergreen. So now I can we can send that link out. People can still register for it, right? You capture that that lead registration, and they can watch it then uh, as a recording. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a really valuable thing. I love that idea. Yeah, that's pretty pretty cool as well. So you know, one thing that I'm personally focused on is like, what is like the best use of my time? And like, I'm trying to outsource a lot of tasks. We're talking beforehand how like I finally started hiring a video editor and yeah. handing that off to the video editor so I can focus on things that are just a higher ROI. What do you think are like some of the most valuable things that you can be doing with your time? Or to phrase it another way, this is how Sharon puts it. If you can only work one hour a day, what would you do during that one hour? Um, I, I think the, yeah, the, the marketing to many is something that again, I, I continue trying to hone. Um, mm -hmm. So I started doing the cold calls and call, you know, that was marketing one-to-one, -one, just rapid fire. Um, marketing one to many really is a game changer, right? If you, if you can do, you know, uh, that webinar, right. And uh, not to beat that dead horse, but like, if you can do that webinar, that takes you 40 minutes to do the webinar. Um, and you can land, you know, eight days out, have three more clients than you had eight days prior. Like that was a really valuable 40 minutes. Um, yeah. and now obviously there is more than 40 minutes cause you got to prepare it. You've got to have a slide deck to show and, you know, there's more than 40 minutes that, that goes into that. But um, if, if we were to break down the amount of time I spent preparing for that webinar and then actually hosting it and following up with it and break that down into a dollar per hour that it's going to wind up being, I mean, it's probably into the thousands of dollars per hour. Right. right. So I, I think that's, you know, how, how do you, how do you best leverage yourself to, to do marketing one to many? Um, I, I think that's the, the best play. Um, and, and, a lot of it too can come through, you know, how are you just providing value, right? It doesn't have to be a webinar. Maybe it's a, uh, an ebook or something, you know, like how to, how to best sell a home, right? They can, they can download that. You, you put out the ads, you create the content once you put the ads out and they download it. They consume the content because it's valuable to them. And now you're able to effectively follow up. Um, so that, that's, that's the stuff that I'm totally geeking out with over the last say year is yeah. how do I, how do I refine those processes? I love it. So there's one to many content creation essentially, or more yeah. Yeah. One to many marketing. I love that. Um, and do you, do you have any like good book recommendations or podcast recommendations for people or anything that's really influential in your own development? Um, I will say, so there's, there's two podcasts that I listen to regularly. One is, uh, the 5am club. Um, mm -hmm. that's one that's done. The podcast is, is done by a bunch of folks here on the East coast. Um, so I like to listen to that. And I also listen to Sharon's business school podcast. That one is like, I mean, he's, it's just, he's brilliant. Right. So, um, listening to that, it's, it's always, there's always good ideas in there that I can take and, and sort of just get the creative juices flowing. Like how can I implement this in my business? Um, in terms of book recommendations, I, I, you know, I still am, am a big fan of, of a couple of old ones. Um, I think because for me, you know, I, I didn't, I, again, I didn't come from a family that was big in business. It was a very kind of blue collar family. And so I had a lot of stories in my head about, um, about money and about how to achieve success and, and the people that did, you know, maybe got it, you know, inherited success or something from okay. their family. And, and one of the books that was really, that totally changed the way that I thought about things was Millionaire Next Door. Yeah. Um, that, that was that just like a survey, right. Of, and again, this is, it's old it's from, I think like the early nineties, but was a at the time, a survey of the millionaires in the United States. And like, how did they acquire their wealth? And it turned out that something like, like 85 or 90% of them had never inherited a dollar, right? They were all 100% self-made. Uh, and that to me was like, like it was, it was just, it was empowering. It was exciting to me because again, that was not what I had learned growing up. Uh, and it, you know, I wanted to believe that if I just did the right things and, and, you know, maybe had the right mentors, like I could find success too. And I think that was the book that, sort of convinced me that yes, that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love that. I love that book. And one of the big takeaways I got from that book was is saying that, you know, millionaires, they're typically not the people that are buying a new car every single year and buying yeah. really flashy outfits and trying to show off their wealth. 
who that actually is, is the people in the middle class that want everybody else to think they're far more successful than they actually are. That's and so I, true. Yeah. And I started recognizing that and looking at it and all over the place. And like most people that I know that are multimillionaires, they're very humble and they yep. actually, they don't want to flaunt it because it does create kind of an odd dynamic. Like when somebody knows that you're super wealthy, it's, it, it just creates an odd like power dynamic almost and makes people uncomfortable sometimes. And so most millionaires are very humble and they don't flaunt that. They don't try to advertise like, Hey, I'm a multimillionaire. It's those middle-class people that are struggling that want you to think, and they'll put themselves in debt just to make people think they're more Thousands successful than they are. Well, and it's so funny, dude, because yeah, again, coming from like the, the policing background, mm -hmm. like I, mean, I I understand the world through metaphors, right? And so I, I often think, you know, I see metaphors between, you know, business and what I did in law enforcement. And, you know, the, the people who I worked a lot of with drugs and, and interdiction and things like that in law enforcement, and the people who were the most successful in the drug game, <laughs> like the ones that, that you know, you, you would have never known it, right? They lived a quiet life in the suburbs. Like, you know, they, you just would have had no idea that this mansion in, you know, outside of Washington, D.C. was bought and paid for in cash from drugs. And, you know, and and I think, you know, it's funny to me because it's, you know, there is kind of a parallel, right? Like, yeah. like the people who actually have success oftentimes are, are the ones that are going to be the least boisterous about it. Um, yeah. And the ones that are the most, the loudest are often the ones that are kind of faking it, you know, trying to fake it to make it, trying to make a name for themselves because they don't really have the success to show, right? Um, and, and that holds true, held true in that world and it holds true now in my current life. <laughs> Who would have thought these drug dealers are teaching you valuable life lessons? That's right, that's, that's right, that's, good that's for them. <laughs> That's yeah, man. And that is such a profound like realization for myself. And actually I started being a lot less flashy uh, after kind of like reading that book. I, I think it's a great book to read Millionaire Next Door. All right, Alex, if anybody wanted to reach out to you and kind of follow up, what, what's a good way? Uh, what's your, all your socials and a good way for people to contact you? Yeah. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram. That's uh, where I'm primarily at on social at Alex Bracky. Uh, I got, I got really creative on that one. Uh, at Alex Bracky, um, you can DM me there and uh, always happy to, to uh, start a conversation. Yeah, that's great, man. All right, man. I really appreciate your time and I'll, I'll see you around at the real events. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, bud. Bye. So I recently started a weekly email of free training here at Real Broker that's open to all agents at all brokerages. Every single week, I personally hand select what I think are the five most interesting live trainings that we have going on that week in the Real Academy, and I send that out to my email list. If you like free training, you'd like to sign up for this weekly email, I have a link down in the description below. And if you'd like to see more interviews just like this on the Next Gen Agents Show, you can check out this playlist right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.